phones, we'd appreciate that. And after we do the roll and do the minutes, the way it works is city staff will present on an item. Once they're done presenting, it's opened up just to the commission for technical questions. Once we're done with technical questions, public can then speak. Uh, if you have something to say, please just step up to the microphone up here in the front of the room and state your name and address so we have it for the minutes. With that, let us call the roll. Kathleen Proff. Here. Ed Bowen. Steve Cummings. Here. Michael Ford. John Hins. Present. John Kiefer. Here. Robert Viger. Here. Thomas Perry. Here. Andrew Mott. Thomas Boytek. Here. Moving on to the approval of the minutes from November 6th. Do we have any corrections, additions, deletions, etc.? Move approval. Anybody going to second? I'll second. All right, thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The okay, motion passes. I wasn't Moving on to item to number one. <laughs> right there. No. Yeah. Residential That's design standards second. variance to allow window area reductions at 1936 Oregon Street. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this item is a design standards variance request to allow reduction of window area on the front facade at 1936 Oregon. Um, here's the subject site. Might be a little bit harder to see here, but you can see it in blue, hopefully um, get a sense of it. It's right on Oregon, so it's on the south side of town here. Um, surrounded by single family properties on the north, south, and west. And then that kind of odd lot there directly to the east is a two family property there. Um, but all the properties are zoned single family residential SR9. Um, a little bit of the background on this planning services staff actually issued a correction notice to the applicant because um, there were some window closures done in production of area without a permit. So the correction notice was issued to the property owner on September 25th, 2018, and planning staff talked to the, the owner, basically said you would have to apply for a design standards variance or restore the facade to what it was. <coughs> Subject site here in Ariel, um, you can see in blue again there, just kind of giving you a sense of the residential nature of the area there. Um, Getting into the code reference, um, just for anybody watching at home and for the plan commission, section 30-241 in the design standards of our zoning ordinance basically prohibits closing of window openings on the front facades. Um, that includes gable areas, um, basically prohibits closing or filling those totally or partially. So that's the applicable code reference right there. Here is an image looking towards the subject property. I'm um, just trying to see how to use this pointer, I'm not sure. So there's the subject property there. Um, you can see here's a single window that's in place right now. And I'll show you what it used to look like in a minute. But this is the subject property here. Um, and then kind of looking down to the south along Oregon here. And then across the street here, so you can see a lot of the one and a half, two, two-story, um, single-family residential, some varied um, architectural character, but similar scale here. And then this is looking to the north from the subject property, which would be over to the right here, if you're looking up along Oregon. So just giving you a sense of the massing of some of these properties here and the scale. So here is um, the Google Street View here showing the previous state of the property. So you can see some, a little bit dark here, but two double hung side by side windows here. Um, and they took up a good amount of the area of this ground floor of the front facade on this, this side here. This is what they ended up doing. So they closed off one of the windows completely and they decreased the area of the other. Um, what they said was that this is a closet space, so that closet space does not warrant having these larger windows here. Um, I believe they said too that just due to the state of the windows they needed to be replaced anyway. But you can get a sense of what it was and what it has become there. The work was done within, I, I'm not sure exactly when, but within the past couple few years. Here is what they were proposing as a potential middle ground here. Um, they said ideally if they could just leave the single window as it was, as you can see there, that's what they would do, but otherwise, if they had to, they would do something like this. Um, I think I calculated that 
according to my math, they when they reduced this window here and they completely eliminated the other one, it was like a 73% window area reduction for the total opening there. Um, what they would be proposing here with the two double hung, albeit smaller, but side by side double hung windows, it'd be about a 46% size reduction there. Um, but replacing this one with just a, a similar size window there, I think maybe a 29 by 39 inch window if I remember correctly. So we recommended that you approve the design standard variance, but with these conditions. So basically the window trim, one that I've been trying to put in pretty standard, the window trim for the new window would match the color and appearance of the existing windows on the home. So we want some continuity there. Proposed work would meet all other applicable residential design standards. A window 29 by 39 inch in size, so same area as the existing window that was put into the opening there, would be installed adjacent to the existing window and be in line with the sill and head of that existing window. Um, this window would match the double hung window that is currently there as I mentioned. And then the design standards variance would only apply to the two ground floor window openings applied for. So any future window area reductions would have to come through the plan commission. Um, basically our finding was that the variance would not be contrary to the public interest. Um, I wanted to note that there are a few other code issues that we are, as staff are gonna have to follow up on. One is there, I don't know if you'll see it here that well, but basically their porch roof is a standing seam metal roof here. You can't see it here, but it, it's maybe a little bit here. It's kind of got a, a brownish reddish color. Um, it does not match obviously with the shingle roof up here. And so that's gonna have to be addressed somehow. It may be a design standards variance. It may be that they have to either install standing seam here or <coughs> restore this or something. But it doesn't work with the code right now. The other issue is that their um, lumber here had to be either painted or treated, or I mean, excuse me, stained, um, within 18 months of installation. That was not done. So that's another thing that we as staff are gonna follow up with them on, because that does not appear to have been done. And then they also need to install some kind of a bottom rail on the, it's hard to see here, but on the outside of these, um, basically what would be spindles or balusters there. Um, basically, we just don't allow those to come down and attach to the outside face of a joist there. So we would talk with the applicant a little bit more. It's hard to see here, but that's not code compliant right now. So a few things, code issues that are still outstanding that we as staff are gonna follow up on. But for now. Yep. We're just, we're just, correct. just focusing on this, right. but just kind of a heads up to the planning commission. You may see more stuff come through to you. You may come back as a design standard variance. We don't know. Yep. But yeah, so the recommendations there, um, the conditions and the finding, that's what it is right there. All right, thank you. Technical questions? Anyone? Thank you for working with the applicant on this one. Yes, mm -hmm. Ed. Um, just out of curiosity, did you, did you calculate out at all what the overall glazing area on that facade winds up being <coughs> with uh, either of those options? I, I know you calculated out what the reduction in that that double, that original yep. double hung was. I just wonder what the overall impact on the, the window surfaces on that facade might wind up being in either of those scenarios. I unfortunately did not calculate the entire glazing area for that facade. That is a good question. That's something that we could do going forward. Yeah, I, um, I think that, I mean, at least for me, that kind of helps me understand. Sure. That, that's one of the sort of the, the trigger points of some of the other things that we do, like at least on like new construction and things like that, we have that level of, I don't remember specifically what it is, if it's 50% or whatever it is, but whatever that glazing amount is, it mm -hmm. might help to compare these types of things when that comes in, just to understand how, I guess, how much we're looking at. Sure. Other technical questions? Okay, seeing none, anyone here from the public to speak to this item today? Come on up, sir, state your name and address, and tell us what you think. <coughs> Hi, my name is Frank St. John, I'm 1936 Oregon Street. <clears throat> um, the windows, what you proposed about the double window, you know, adding a second window, I have no problem with that. I gotta order it and it takes four to six weeks. Um, and then the roof, I talked with them 
on that a little bit and in the spring what I'm planning on doing is getting rid of the metal and doing shingles like the rest of the house has so that is being you know addressed too just to let you know and then as far as the railings you mentioned something about that I have heard anything about that so I don't know anything about that yet so yeah so um, if I can try to explain so basically where you have a bottom rail what's happening is usually that bottom rail is supposed to be underneath so you have your spindles or balusters that bump down into the top of that bottom rail right now it looks like they come down and attach to the face of that and what we don't want is that type of scenario so what, what would have to happen is you'd have to take and attach maybe say a another rail on the outside of those spindles if you will or those balusters okay. whatever you want to call them yep attach something to the outside of that to cover those to so secure them okay yeah okay yeah like i said nobody is i took out all the permits and everything for the deck when i did it nothing had been said yet so i'm glad you brought it up like i said i can definitely do that i should be a pretty quick fix yep. yeah i can add another one to the outside that's not a problem like i said nobody has said anything about that so i thought looking at other decks and stuff is what i went by you know and sure. what they proposed when i did blueprints and that so that's and then only other thing excuse me oh, sorry that's okay <laughs> um just to make sure that you're um fasteners are not exposed to where they can be seen from the street. Okay. Just don't want you to get caught doing that and then here we have another thing that we didn't tell you or something. So Okay. Yep. Great. So as far as the windows go, we're good? Yeah. In terms of what there. All right. Yep. That's you had said putting a second one in the same size as the one that's there. Yep. Okay. Yeah, cuz I just wanted to make sure you knew too that when I put that one in, I didn't narrow it at all. I just shortened it. Sure. So and then the other one will be the same thing which would take up the same space that it did before other than it's shorter. Mhm. Mm all right, thank you, okay. sir. Thank you. Anyone else? I see no one else here. Cool. All right, back to the commission for discussion and whatever. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Um, I just want to say one thing because I kind of live in the neighborhood because where I am on Broadway, it's like about a little over a block away from there. I drive by the house all the time. This house, even though they have things they have to tighten up, they're improving the hell out of this house. Yeah, it looks, <laughs> it's, it, it, it looks so much better than it did before. So, I mean, I'm glad to see that the city's working with them and we're not raking them across the coals. <laughs> Any other comments or thoughts? I yeah, agree. this is a good compromise. I, I would agree. Thanks for everybody to be willing to do that. All right. Let's call the Okay. Hints? Aye. Keeper? Aye. Spiger? Aye. Perry? Aye. Prop? Aye. Bowen? Aye. Cumming? Aye. Ford? Aye. Boytek? Aye. Motion carried 9-0. Okay, moving on to item number two, a two-lot land division and certified survey map at 305 Ohio Street. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right, this is the first of two land divisions I'll be presenting today. Uh, the first is located at 305 Ohio Street. Um, if you're familiar with it, it's a site of, a, I believe, a BP um, gas station and C store. Um, the petitioners, uh, and, well, a little background story or information. Um, also on the property on the western side, where's the laser pointer? There we go, is a, uh, a storage building or storage use uh, on the same property. The petitioners proposing to split the two uses from each other by uh, via CSM to, to create both lots or two lots. Uh, to allow him to separate the uses. Um, both lots are sized appropriately. Uh, the property is zoned UMU urban mixed use and both lots do meet um, minimum requirements in the UMU district um, with lot one being sized at 3.51 acres. That's the one with the storage use. And then lot two um, sized at uh, just over half an acre, which is uh, which contains the gas station and uh, C store use. Um, one issue the division division will uh, will uh, cause is the entire site is pretty much paved with asphalt, so there's going to be a zero foot setback um, created uh, where the new lot line is going to be uh, placed. This can be corrected by uh, providing a cross access easement uh, for the two properties, so vehicles can traverse back and forth. Otherwise. His other option would be he would have to remove, or the owner would have to remove uh, five feet of pavement on either side of the new lot line. I did speak to the petitioner today and he's fine with uh, having a cross access easement prepared. Um, 
other than that, there are a couple of, you know, here's the actual CSM that was submitted. Uh, there are several features missing from the map, which uh, has been conveyed to the surveyor. Uh, things are missing, such as um, the paved areas, all the structures, the canopies not shown on the map. And uh, in cases like this, we wanted to see the locations of utilities and the uh, underground storage tanks. So this will be required uh, on the final CSM um, before the city will sign off on it. So staff is recommending approval of this two lot CSM uh, with two conditions. One, uh, either a cross access easement shall be provided or um, five feet of pavement shall be removed on either side of the new lot line. And it sounds like that's gonna be taken care of with the easement. And then all structures um, that are not shown shall be shown on the final CSM. All right, thank you. Technical questions, anyone? Seeing none, anyone here from the public to speak to this item today? Nobody. Back to the commission. Move approval. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Comments? All right, call the roll. Kenny? Aye. Keeper? Aye. Feigart? Aye. Perry? Aye. Prop? Aye. Bowen? Present. Cumming? Aye. Ford? Aye. Voitek? Aye. Motion carried 801. Okay, moving on to item number 38, same neighborhood. <coughs> Two yep. lot land division and certified survey map at the East 200 block of Ohio Street. Thank you. Uh, yep, this is just north of the previous site at um, Bridgeview Center, uh, but up on the screen is an aerial showing, showing uh, proposed land division of, of two, or uh, taking one lot and creating two lots out of it. Um, the site is zoned riverfront mixed use with a plan development overlay. Uh, the subject site is uh, a communal parking lot for um, a bunch of different pro uh, properties located at Bridge Bridgeview Center. Uh, right here and it uh, serves as parking facilities for uh, the businesses along the river and the property to the south I believe right here. Uh, petitioners proposing to create this land division to separate the parking lot from uh, kind of a larger undeveloped area which is proposed lot two up on the screen. Um, I didn't hear directly from the or the owner but it, it's Assume that he's looking to uh, develop lot two of the similar use to the other, other uses located at the center. Um, proposed lot two is currently entirely vacant besides um, a communal uh, sign that serves for all the businesses at, at Bridge, Bridgeview Center, which is located at the southwest corner of the lot. Um, both lots do meet all the uh, minimum dimensional requirements of the RMU district, so that's um, no issues created there. Oops. Here's a copy of the actual CSM showing the land division. I, I did talk to the surveyor to have a couple things corrected on it, which he has already, so there are a couple conditions which will be axed off um, at the end of my presentation. Um, one issue that will need to be rectified is um, existing cross access easements will have to be updated uh, to accommodate the new uh, lot line which is creating zero foot setbacks um, that's already been handled by the surveyor and then one thing that was missing from the CSM was access restriction of lot 2 to Ohio Street and that has already been um, um, uh, corrected by the surveyor uh, back the, back in 2008 the DOT bought up the access rights to Ohio Street and required any other developments they would have to use the communal um, driveway and parking area to access the um, Bridgeview Center and um, that has been corrected. Uh, one last item that has not been uh, resolved yet is there are several, several util utility easements that should be shown on the map um, each, let me go back to this, each, each of these properties have um, water and sewer laterals which run through either lots one and lots two and there is no record of any easements serving any of these properties up here so I'll be working with a surveyor to have those drafted up before we sign off on the final CSM. So with that staff is recommending approval of um, the two lot CSM 
um, with a couple of conditions which have been removed, the, uh, the cross-access easements and the um, access restriction on Ohio Street that's been taken care of. And the last remaining condition that still needs to be uh, fulfilled is um, requiring any utility easements uh, serving the other properties along the riverfront. All right, thank you. Technical questions? Seeing none, anyone here from the public to speak to this item? Okay, okay back to the commission. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion on the motion? I'll call the roll. Hintz? Aye. Kiefer? Aye. Bygart? Aye. Perry? Aye. Prop? Aye. Bowen? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Ford? Aye. Aye. Motion carry 9 0. Item number four conditional use permit and access control variance request for a multifamily use at 913 and 915 South Main Street. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a conditional use permit request to establish a multifamily use at 913 and 915 South Main Street. They're also requesting an access control variance for driveway width. Uh, the subject site is uh, located on the west side of the 900 block of South Main Street. The property is a three-story historic retail building which was built in 1895 and it's been vacant for several years. Uh, the surrounding area is predominantly uh, commercial and industrial uses to the north, south, and east and residential uses to the west. Uh, the property is also located in the South Shore East planning area uh, identified in the imagined Oshkosh plan. Here's an aerial view of the subject site. The petitioner is proposing to convert the existing building into apartment units. Uh, the first floor will be remodeled into five live work townhome style apartment units and the upper two floors will be uh, 18 loft style apartment units in a mixture of one and two bedroom configurations and the multifamily use requires a conditional use permit in the CMU district. Uh, the petitioner states that the large storefront Glass facades will allow for home offices, galleries, and meeting spaces on the main street front of the building uh, with movable partition walls to separate the living spaces from the home offices or gallery spaces. Um, the application also states that the layout is designed to allow for the first floor live work units to transition back to full storefront retail at some point in time in the future if necessary. And staff is recommending that a two hour, uh, two hour rated floor to ceiling assembly be installed to ensure that the units can be converted back to commercial space. Uh, staff does have concerns about the conversion of the, of the first floor's uh, more traditional Main Street style storefronts into a residential use that doesn't activate ped pedestrian activity at the street as the long-term vision for the area uh, per the Imagine Oshkosh plan is of a mixed use pedestrian oriented, oriented district. Uh, however, staff is willing to support the ground floor units if they are constructed to easily allow the units to be rehabbed into commercial spaces. Uh, also, all window openings should be maintained or restored and the rehab uh, of the first floor window fronts should not re uh, reduce any of the glazing area and should remain to look like a storefront. Uh, the renovation does not include any changes to the uh, building footprint or the parking area. The trash and recycling enclosures will be placed in the back of the building. Um, they will require a code compliance uh, screening. Uh, as far as access, the parking area will be in the back of the, of the building, access from the rear alley. Um, Department of Public Works did note that an access control variance is required as the driveway width exceeds the maximum allowed, which is 24 feet. Uh, staff does not have concerns with the driveway width, which is 72 feet. Uh, as the existing driveway has historically functioned as is without issue and it is needed for the uh, entrance to the five parking stalls in the back of the building. Um, as I mentioned, there's five parking stalls. However, in the CMU district, um, there is no requirement for off-street parking, um, but residential uses must provide evidence of the availability of off-street parking in the amount of one space per dwelling unit within 1,000 feet of the unit. So the applicant will need to provide evidence of the availability of those parking stalls. Uh, no signage is being proposed this time. Uh, a lighting plan will need to be submitted as part of the site plan review process. Uh, a landscaping plan is not required for the site as there's no additional building area or pavement. Uh, Public Works reviewed the proposal and did not note any stormwater concerns. So here's the layout plans. So first floor shows the five uh, townhome style apartments 
And these second and third floors have the one and two bedroom loft style apartments. Here's a view of the building from uh, South Main Street. And as previously mentioned, staff is recommending that they maintain the storefront appearance as well as um, the glazing and they don't reduce any window sizes. Here's a view of the rear of the building where they will have their uh, parking area and rear entrances. Um, also, as it will be converted to residential use, um, there will be windows being punched in the uh, back of the building. And at that point, they will need to submit plans um, for plan commission review um, or special area design review. And with that, uh, staff recommends approval of the proposed CUP for a multifamily use and access control variance uh, with the findings and conditions in your staff report with the addition of uh, condition number eight that the petitioners shall submit plans for special area design review by, pl by plan commission for all exterior facade changes. All right, thank you. Technical <coughs> questions starting with John. <coughs> with the uh, rear windows that they're going to be punching in the back, are there any concerns historically with the building as far as matching, mean, you know, with, with what would be on the rest of the building? You know, you know what I mean? Are we going Likely. To any, anything that way? Until we see the plans, that's why we put that. That's why we put that second that condition on there. Mm -hmm. That will allow us to evaluate whether we think it's um, historically accurate. Uh, I think uh, when the applicant gets up here, I think they're talking about doing, trying to go for the historic tax credit. If the historic tax credit is in play, then they will have to do do things like that. They did take this before. It was at the Landmarks uh, Commission last week, uh, last week as well, and I think there was general support for the concept at, at that point. Very meeting. much so. Yeah. Um, I just want to re, uh, find out again. The Landmarks Commission did review this no and has wait. no problems Correct. at this point. Very enthusiastic about the facade being maintained and so forth. Okay. Correct, but we don't have... The, the, the back of the building, was that talked about or that... Not in any detail. I think that's a concern because it's, it's covered in, in sheet metal, I believe, right now. Uh, but that's why we put that 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 final. We're recommending that final condition that uh, when we get the plan, when we get the exterior plans, that we bring it back for the plan commission for uh, the uh, sad review, as Ed calls it. Oh, so the plan, your plan commission will see this again. Yes. In terms of that back wall. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah, good. the facade changes. Because landmarks gets a little testy. I know. Oh, I personally know <laughs> Sometimes that. Sometimes they sure. have good reason. Yes, yes. Could I also ask, uh, go back to the photo on the front, is, does this include the red building on the left or only that the taller structure? Yes. Building on the left too. On the left also? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that lovely garage door or whatever that is, what the white in? thing. That will be replaced, Stephen. The garage door on the left, the building on the left, that will be removed and Something is going to be replacing it, correct? Let's. Uh, well, we can wait for the petition. I think the petitioner right, well, can I'll help agree. us in that. That's a technical <coughs> question. We, I can. Uh, I can wait. Uh, my question is, having sat through the sawdust, the sawdust district meetings, we had a long discussion about whether or not mm -hmm. there should be residential mm -hmm. on the first floor on the street. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if if this all gets approved, this is cool in terms of it's not violating any kind of. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let me take a step back. We have we haven't adopted that plan yet, okay. and I think you know different parts of South Maine are going to have different uh, development scenarios right. laid, uh, laid out for it. I think definitely North and Ninth is a different a different uh, vibe than probably <coughs> South and Ninth. Uh, that being said, we haven't adopted the plan yet, and the other. The other thing that we have, well, and this is conditional use permit, so it's, it's permitted by conditional use permit right. for right now. Um, I think the long-term idea is that this area transitions out. The, the, the point is timing right now, and I think, you know, a transition out of this area is 10, ten years out. Yeah. Because we have the whole east side to deal with. The area is not ripe for retail because we haven't done anything with the parking and with the no parking along South Main. Uh, I think staff is behind us because it's going to add some activity and life at the pedestrian level. Sure. They'll, they'll add some life to this area. So I think that's why we can get behind it. But that's also why we've put some of those conditions in there that so, so when the, the look. yeah, and when the time is right, that this area can more easily transform into a commercial retail area. Okay. Other technical questions? All right, seeing none, anyone here from the audience to speak to this item today? Once, 
twice. Okay, back to the commission. Motion to approve with the conditions. Second. All right. Dis any discussion? Kathy, you have any further questions as long as we're. Um, yeah, I think the answer is something will positive will happen with that garage door. Sure. And like I said, it's, it's coming. It's coming back here. So, right. it'll, it'll, it will come back. It's going to come back here for review. I think right now they're trying to get some things in place uh, to potentially apply for a tax credit. So things are they, they got to get uh, kind of an approval at the local level. We've put enough conditions on it that we're comfortable that anything that happens, it's going to come back to staff and or planning commission for review. Okay. Great. I think it's uh, I think it's a great project. Mayor Cummings. Uh, and when the petitioner talked to Landmarks Commission, they showed examples of work they have done in other cities with older structures, and they have been nice. So they've got experience in this area. Okay. Good. Great. Yeah, I would uh, second what Kathy said about this is really nice for this street. Go ahead, Ed. Um, just one, since you credited me with the term. Uh, the, the special area design review, which I have indeed called the sad review when I've been going through it before. We didn't think about that. So, um, so is, is, this, is this area, uh, so that, that special area design covers certain pieces of, and, and Mark, maybe you can speak to this a little better than Darren, but this is because it's in the South Shore. CMU. CMU. All oh. CMU zoning. Okay. All CMU zoning requires the special area design review, which is a, and, and again, because we haven't, this is part of the new zoning code that we haven't really run through in, in a couple of, except for maybe me. Um, so that comes through plan commission. So there are three types of SAT reviews. <laughs> Thank project, you. This is project I just want you to keep saying it. Which is what uh, Morgan District had to do, right, right. design for fresh builds. There is a, alteration review and there is a design review. An alteration review is the simplest of them. It's for very minor exterior changes, staff level approval. Project reviews on the other end, plan commission approval and council approval. In the middle we have design reviews within the SAD. Uh, those are projects that have some exterior changes, enough that staff feels it should go to at least plan commission for, for some oversight. That's what this project is looking at. It's looking at a design alteration review, which our recommendation as staff would be it come to plan commission, so at least there's some open discussion. But that doesn't then require it to go it's to council as the next step. Council. Okay, gotcha. All right, great. Okay. Thanks, Ed, for the update. Uh, it's, it's sort of, I, it took me by surprise when we went through it too, so I just, I wasn't totally sure how this one gets navigated, but that's helpful, thanks. Any other discussion? See none, call the roll. Hinks? Aye. Kiefer? Aye. Bigart? Aye. Perry? Aye. Prop? Aye. Bowen? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Ford? Aye. Boytek? Aye. Motion carried 9 0 with condition. And on to item number five, we are saving the best for last. Specific <coughs> implementation plan amendment request for vehicle sales at 1911 West Snell Road. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure thing. Um, so this one we're going to go over quite a bit of background and history compared to um, the last projects that we just talked about. As this site has been before Planning Commission and Council numerous times throughout the year. Uh, so this is Lawrence Truck Stop located on uh, Snell, used to be on the old Fountain Drive. As you can see it is a commercially used parcel. Uh, it's a truck stop, they do some towing. Um, they're trying to implement automobile sales and as an allowed use. Uh, so it's about a 5.3, or excuse me, 5.8 acre parcel, currently zoned urban industrial with a planned development. Um, comprehensive land use plan does call for industrial uses in this area. So we'll start with a little bit of background. Originally, in 2006, Common Council approved a conditional use permit and planned development amendment to expand the existing truck stop to include automobile sales for two years. In conjunction with that, they put nine conditions on that approval and those are found within your uh, staff report. Then in 2014 that two years expired and the applicant had to go back to the Planning Commission to try to renew it. Council denied it at that time. Following up again in 2008 the applicant went back to Common Council for a plan development amendment but the automobile sales portion was not part of it and it was only for an existing ground sign to be relocated 
a fence on the property and a new driveway and a building addition. That was then approved in 2008 with five conditions. Again, those are found within your uh, staff report. Fast forward to May of 2017, Planning Services did issue a correction notice to this property for unlicensed, unregistered, and Apple vehicles being stored in the open. Applicant indicated that they were vehicles that were going to be for sale. Discussions went forth and said, no, you're going to need a plan development amendment then to make that a permitted use. So the applicant subsequently filed for the automobile sales plan development amendment. Included in that was a 50 by 50 building addition and fencing in some outdoor storage area. Uh, this was the prior site plan that was approved as part of 2008. As you can see, this included the relocation of the driveway, relocation of a sign, and a fenced in outdoor storage area, um, kind of in this area. Nothing else on the rest of the property. <clears throat> so currently, the applicant is looking to add automobile sales as a permitted use, do a 50 by 50. Uh, we'll get back to that. Let's go to the current site plan. So this is their current site plan that they're proposing. So they're looking at doing a 50 by 50 building addition, uh, regulating a number of their parking stalls for automobile sales as well as customer and employee parking, and expanding an outdoor storage area. So they're looking to expand the outdoor storage area. The previously approved outdoor storage area, and you can see it on this plan, was about one acre in size. The applicant was looking at nearly doubling that with approximately 3,900 square feet of additional outdoor storage area. With that, the applicant was previously approved to use a metal eight-foot fence for the storage area, and the applicant would like to continue using that eight-foot metal fence. Staff does not support the use of the metal fence for the new larger outdoor storage area. As we've now increased the visibility from 41 and neighboring properties, that previous fence stopped about here. So staff does not support the use of the metal fence. By code, it is required an eight foot solid screen fence for outdoor storage areas. In this case, staff would like to see the new portion of the fence and, and through conditions, it be similar to what we've used in other areas, whether it be the, a solid wood fence or some of the vinyl fences or the woven mesh chain link fences that we've seen in the past that we feel look a little bit better. Um, this photo shows kind of that existing metal fence that the applicant is using. In conjunction with that, staff is also wants a condition placed on the property that right now there's a missing section of fence. <clears throat> you can see through that fence into the outdoor storage area. So this portion of the fence right now is non-code compliant as the existing outdoor storage is not being fully screened. So we're asking for a condition to be placed on the property requiring them to fix that portion of the fence and then use the newer material for the rest of the fence. Also with that, as you can see here, when the applicant was approved <coughs> in 2008, they were required to put in this new access <coughs> driveway on the western portion of the property. At that time, a condition was placed on that, that new driveway be code compliant with city standards, meaning it needed to be asphalt or concrete. The applicant did not do an asphalt or concrete driveway. As you can see in this photo, it is gravel. So we're asking that a condition we place, making them bring this back up to city standards, this being asphalt or concrete, as well as the access drives. And we'll get to some aerial photos later to show, but the access drives um, that were done as part of this same project were supposed to be concrete. They were never done as concrete. It's basically a big gravel area. So staff's recommending a condition be placed that all of that be brought up to current standards as it should be asphalt or gravel per codes. So the applicant has shown over the years an inability to, and I'm going to jump around here a little bit, um, an inability or unwillingness to meet the standards that have been placed on him. And that's why the city in this case is asking for kind of one unique aspect of this plan uh, development, and that's for an actual plan. He wants to do a large outdoor storage area. So we're asking that to be required to bring a written and drawn plan back to this body showing exactly what he's going to use the outdoor storage area for, how vehicles are going to be stored, what is the long-term intent of those vehicles. The applicant has never been approved for basically a junkyard or salvage yard where vehicles can just remain indefinitely. This was supposed to be an auto repair business and towing yard where vehicles had a very quick transition in and out. That's what he was always previously approved for. So to kind of show the history of the site, here's the site in 2000. You can see there was a little bit of storage going on. So I'll move forward to 2003, a little more storage going on. 
2005, a little bit of expanded gravel and they're, they're kind of bordering on going out of the neighbor's property here. 2006, again, also you can see, oh, we got a lot more storage going on here. This is 2008 when the applicant went through a lot of their approval processes. And you can see they now have this, the fenced outdoor storage area, but they're continuing to use an area that they're not approved for. 2009, again, you can see now they've gotten their approvals. This is supposed to be their only outdoor storage area, but they're still using some other areas. 2010, you can see all of a sudden from 2009 to 2010, a significant more storage is going on outside of the approved area. Again, 2013, you can see kind of that outdoor storage outside <coughs> of the approved area. 2015, that's still maintaining. And as we go to the next one, I want, to, want you to focus on this area right here. So this was 2015, this is 2017. Again, even more significant portion of outdoor storage outside of the approved area. You've got all these trailers lining the exterior of the property, and then this huge increase of outdoor storage here. This outdoor storage area you see here is basically what the applicant is now asking to be allowed to have, to go from just this to all of this area. So this is why the staff's asking, okay, you want this outdoor storage area, we're gonna screen it appropriately per the code, Let's see a plan of what you're actually going to do in this outdoor storage area. How are you going to use it? Is it for towing vehicles? Is it for vehicle repair? <coughs> is it for vehicles that you're repairing before you sell them? Because the code is not giving them permission to run a salvage yard or a wrecking yard at this location where vehicles are stored indefinitely. This is supposed to be a, a faster turnover type of business. Um, talking about a couple of other things, we talked about the missing portion of the fence that needs to be repaired. Um, site design and access, we talked about kind of those hard surfacing that are insufficient. Uh, going back to the applicant's current plan, they want to do some automobile sales on this site and they've indicated on their site plan what spaces would be used for sales versus employee parking. Well, according to the numbers provided by the applicant for the square footage of the different uses they have going on in this building, their, their numbers don't equal out to the number of employee spaces needed versus the number they're providing. They're trying to provide substantially less parking for customers and employees than the code would require. When you take into account the uses they've listed in the square footage of those uses, they need about 47 customer spaces. The applicant's only proposing 26. So about 21 less than they're required. It is the staff's opinion that they should have to meet their code requirements for parking first for employees and customers. And any spaces they have remaining after that, if they want to use for automobile sales, would be acceptable. So staff has recommended that a condition be placed allowing them only 21 vehicles uh, for sale spaces. In conjunction with that, right now none of this area is striped. It's just kind of this gravel, concrete mix of area that there are no actually defined parking spaces. The applicant has provided a somewhat of a parking plan here, except a lot of the dimensions don't add up. They're not what they're shown to be, um, and they vary. So staff is saying, we believe the applicant should bring back to this plan commission a fully dimensioned parking plan, showing exactly where the parking is, and then be held to that and be held to striping it to that <coughs> parking plan as shown. So we can actually see where are your customer spaces, where are these vehicle sales spaces? Staff has a concern that, as the applicants <coughs> previously, sun, suddenly we're just going to have a bunch of extra vehicles out here that are, that are being either sold or inoperable. Um, no stormwater management plans have been submitted yet. Um, if the applicant was just doing this building addition, Department of Public Works indicated that they would not need stormwater management because they're not going to break the 20,000 square foot disturbed area. However, stormwater management may be required when they have to pave all of this that is not currently paved. It's just all non-conforming gravel. So stormwater management plans will likely be required in the future. Um, landscaping, uh, we'll talk about signage a little bit. No new signage has been proposed as part of this. 
However, the code requires that any signage that is not being maintained be removed. The applicant has an old sign structure that for years has just been sitting there deteriorating. Staff's recommending that we, as part of this, again, condition it that that sign needs to come down. It hasn't been used in years. It's in deteriorating shape. Let's get it down, clean the property up. And I don't know if the landscape plan made it into the PowerPoint. In your packets are a copy of, um, in 2008, the applicant provided a landscaping plan. It's on page eight of your staff report. Either most of that landscaping was never installed or it was not maintained and is not on the site. So if you take a look at page eight, that is the landscaping plan they had originally proposed. And then you look at page nine, that's the current landscaping plan. As you can see, there is significantly less trees, none of the shrubs that are indicated on that 2008 plan, and a little bit of landscaping they've shown isn't even on their property. So staff is recommending the applicant has a little bit of flexibility here. We'd like to see them either, one, bring it up to compliance with that 2008 plan they indicated, which did show a decent amount of landscaping around the interior of the site, or two, if the applicant would rather bring it to current standards, they bring it up to current code standards for exterior landscaping, paved area landscaping, and yard landscaping. Give them a little bit of flexibility to choose if they want to go back to that old plan, or if they'd like to do a new plan that meets the C standards. But we do believe it should be brought up to some standard of landscaping, as what's shown is severely deficient for code requirements. Uh, finally, building facades, they did not provide any building elevations for their building addition. Um, as this is a plan development, staff is of the opinion that they should bring those building elevations back to plan commission for approval to ensure that any building addition does match with what is what there today. So we are asking that a number of these items be readdressed and brought back to plan commission for review. We're asking that the parking area plan and striping be brought back for review. We're asking the building elevations be brought back to view. And we are asking that an out, basically an outdoor storage plan be provided for review and approval. So with all that, Steph is recommending approval of this subject to a number of conditions. Um, and we can go through them. So first, uh, the first couple of these are actually taking some of the previous conditions that were done as part of prior approvals and just consolidating them onto a single set of conditions basically to make it easier to follow the history of the property. Um, so one, two, and three, and four are all basically just bringing forward previously approved conditions onto this current plan so we can keep track of everything as we move this project forward. Starting with five then are kind of the new conditions. So the first one is that driveway and access drives be brought up to city standards for hard surfaces and be comprised of either concrete or asphalt. We want to get rid of the non-conforming gravel that was put in that should not have been done. Um, second, outdoor storage should be screened with an eight foot code compliant fence, not the eight foot metal fence they're asking. We are, rec we are requiring that it meet code, which would be wood, vinyl, um, pre-woven, galvanized. They're all examples of what code compliant would be. Uh, limiting it to 21 vehicle sales spaces and those to be identified uh, with on-site signage. Again, our, f our concern here is that the applicant is not going to meet his requirements for parking for his employees and customers. We want to make sure that those met needs are met first and then the extra spaces beyond that which are identified by some sort of signage and parking plan can be used for automobile sales. Uh, then apps can provide a fully dimensioned scaled parking plan for plan commission approval. Parking lot will be striped in accordance with that approved plan. No parking of out or outdoor storage shall be permitted outside of those legally established outdoor storage area and no parking outside of those legally established parking spaces. So if we're asking, that can, if you're going to show us this is where your parking is, this is where your outdoor storage is, you're going to be held to those things as shown to try to get away from this, some of this other outdoor storage that's been taking place on the site. <coughs> Applicant shall provide stormwater management plans once 20,000 square feet of disturbed area is reached. Applicant shall either come into conformance with the 2008 landscaping plan or make the current city standards. Building addition um, shall be constructed of the same materials, types, and colors, and those final building elevations be brought back to plan commission for approval. And then finally, that outdoor storage plan shall be reviewed and approved by plan commission. All righty, thank you for your endurance. Technical questions, please. Got it.
I don't know where to start. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Except that this is technical question time, and I will just point out, <laughs> and my opinions will be later. well known later. Um, point out that I drove out there today. There is literally those those pictures do not do this of the. The latest picture, yeah, is that the latest one? Of that's vehicles? 2017, that's the last well, image we had. Well, this does not do it justice. Parking, every available space had a vehicle in it, every single one, along the uh, Highway 41 side, along the building side, to say nothing of all the trailers parked around the edge. There, I would just opine that there is literally no space for vehicle sales. And so it's generous to say that we would be, he would be able to have space for vehicle sales. And that's okay. all I'm going to say right now. Mayor Cummings. <clears throat> I also drove past it today. And, uh, at, one time, at one time that was a truck stop. And I can't tell <laughs> if, they've, if they've completed a rehab of that truck stop, or if it's half done, it's Collins, wasn't it? Collins, Collins yep, that's stop. correct. Um, uh, There's no space for a truck stop. <laughs> but it was a nice truck stop at one time, and I don't know what the building looks like. It should be, is this technical, either level or finished? Um, it is, as we, as people enter or at least drive past the city, and it's my, this is technical. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a worse nice question. It's, it's, it's a worse eyesore than a landfill. <laughs> technical <laughs> eyesore than five. At least the landfill. All right. Like any, any other technical questions? Did I have no technical questions for staff. Did I proceed you, Kathy? Did I proceed you with my comment about what I saw? Any other technical questions? John. Just one. Um, have we heard from the property owners that with all those vehicles that are parked over on the across the lines or? Uh, we I was just curious because it, it was, it was kind of glossed over through the presentation. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I believe the, uh, the the adjacent property owners or property lines been staked out. I believe they hired a surveyor. We were going to go out there and take a look and see if it's if they're actually encroaching uh, based on the surveyor's data or the surveyor the surveyor going out there. And they're here today, so if they choose to speak. Okay, and, and second question, um, were there any concerns because of how long this has been unpaved and all the various vehicles that have been stored there for the contamination? That's a concern. I mean, <laughs> I mean <we're, laughs> it wasn't addressed. That's, it wasn't addressed. That's why I was bringing it up, because that's a lot of years of fluids. Yeah. I mean that's why we you know why we kind of want to have an idea of what the storage plan is because it was never an intent to create a junkyard here. Right. I mean that's uh, we've seen through the aerial photos that some of the vehicles haven't moved for a while. So I mean that's what we're concerned. So yeah, we are we are concerned about that. And maybe it's a condition that we missed and have to look look at another condition. Thomas. I'm concerned about some things well beyond even this stage because there is no easy access um, f for the public to even get there outside of from within the north end of the city. Um, to get there now, you would have to exit on um, Jackson Street or Highway 45 and Rip Road. Um, and therefore, it doesn't even, in my opinion, make it um, conducive for a good car lot. Um, and in order to do so, you would have to have a significant sign, in my opinion, to um, help direct traffic to get there. And so it leads me to believe that there are even more obstacles that need to be um, addressed in the future as well. Would that be true? It's not the most convenient place to get to, and there's not a big population base around there, but there's some residential population. Yeah, if you miss the right and right off Riff Road, you're <laughs> going in circles. Any other technical <laughs> questions? Point. Seeing none, anyone here from the public to speak to this item today? Come on up, sir. <clears throat> up, up here, up here, so they get you on camera. Carl Keyes, Omni Glass and Paint, 3530 Omni Drive. We are the adjacent property owner, one of the adjacent property owners. 
there's a question asked, so I did want to clarify it. That west property line, somebody had asked if um, the trailers on that line have encroached over. Uh, we did have that surveyed by McMahon Associates, um, and the line on there is, is pretty accurate. So the trailers are over the uh, west boundary property line. We have asked formally for them to be removed. Um, that was a little over a month ago. So. Have they moved any? It looks like there's been some activity. They're still well over the line. Um, so there's still an encroachment situation as of today. Yep. Anything else? Uh, no, that was it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here to speak to this item today? Okay, back to the commission. Ed. Um, I Hats off to staff. There you go. <laughs> um, you guys, Darren in particular, has now been dealing with this particular property uh, for longer than I've been on planned commission, um, I believe. And I, I uh, hats off for, for you guys to, to try to find a framework uh, with which to uh, approve this because you are. Um, sort of presuming that the better angels of property owners uh, want to take over and actually uh, operate in good faith with you. And um, I will say, you know, on the record, this property owner has not operated in good faith with the city of Oshkosh uh, and has not done so for the better part of a decade. Um, I. I could go into any number of details from every time that they've come in front of us and every indignant statement that they've made uh, questioning the authority of this body to um, uh, legislate the items that we've talked about here. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm just going to say that I'm not going to support this and I don't think any of us should support this despite the fact that uh, Mark and, and Darren uh, did their darndest to find a pathway to approve this, and, and I think that that's um, uh, I think that's laudable because it shows that you guys really are working in good faith with with applicants who bring in even challenging properties. So uh, I, I have a lot of respect for you guys for having gone through that process with this property owner, um, but I'm not willing to give them um, the benefit of the doubt here. They have not earned that in the last decade, and I I think we're. Uh, we're foolish to think that anything's going to be different this time around. So I'm not going to vote. Uh, I'm going to vote against this. I would uh, write on to what Ed said. The, the only thing I would say to city staff is at some point, time is uh, has value and time is finite. And it's <coughs> like, cannot your time be used for petitioners that, that, that are more willing to work with you and who have shown some respect for what they've been asked to do? I think you've gone too far above me on in this case. <laughs> Maybe there's a strategy there, I don't know, but but I, I there are other petitioners who deserve your time. Kathy. Yes, right on. I mean, this project is arguably the worst eyesore in the entire city. I think that's about what Steve said earlier. Exactly what I and said. frankly, it needs to be sold. It needs to be raised to the ground. The contamination problems need to be cleaned up, and it needs to be sold to somebody that can build a nice gateway property. Uh, what is, I, do, I intend to vote no also. Um, what happens if we all vote no, and he's still out of compliance? Well, we're, curr we're currently uh, address. We're, uh, we're currently got. We have an active case in in court right now. You have an active case in court. Correct. Okay, which could result in something positive, maybe. We're going through the legal processes right now. This is part of that process. Um, they have to go at the local level. To you know, they're making the request for something that we cited them for. Okay. So they're 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 going through that administrative process. Did I miss anything, Amy? Is she, is she here? No. No, we're good. That's okay. All right, I guess that's all I have to say. In the spirit of compromise, because that's what staff's been trying to do. <laughs> Try it. I, I would like to say, is it possible for us to put a one-year check-in on this? 
and have them show some <laughs> actual advancement in a year. Otherwise, I, I, I'm just trying to find that common ground right here. We've sunsetted on this one in the past as well. We've sunk a decade. Yeah, I mean, we, we had a two-year on us at one point. That's when it came back to council, and council did not renew it. Uh, 2008. 2008. So it's it's possible for you to do. Um, you have to be under some real good performance standards on that. I think we tried to get at that with, with the staff report, and we appreciate the comments. We've spent a lot of time out here. Um, I just don't want all the work to go for nothing. Yeah. Like, honestly, I'd at least give them, give them say, hey, this is it. Lines in the sand. <laughs> we were trying with the, with the staff report to try and get at that because we, you know, the staff is as concerned as everybody else around this table, and we've been working on this property over the years rather hard, uh, you know. Because I'd be willing to make a motion with the sunset on it and two more conditions, because <laughs> they need to get the trailers off the adjacent property. So part and they and they need to and we need something about the fluids and contamination out there. Yeah. We need to, we need to the find conditions out that. we placed on it would require the removal of all those. Okay, so then one Nothing more. Nothing would be allowed outside of the outdoor storage area. Yeah, so then one more condition, which and would be the, the contamination, possible yep. contamination. Um, does that sound, I, one year, two years, I, six months, I'm trying to. We, uh, staff is, staff has given you a staff report that they're supportive of, and it's not sunsetted. If you, if that gives you more comfort, then I'd like to that's, hear what that's, everybody that's, else thinks if we, you. if they want to sunset that. Thomas and then Steve. Uh, before I make the motion. Tom, Tom um, well, I also agree that the um, city employees have done an admirable job trying to make this work. I believe firmly that it's 13 or 14 conditions that will not be met and have no intention to be met. Steve? Just one comment I do have to leave another commitment, but this is the same in individual that had vehicles stored on the corner lot on Oregon and 9th for next to ever in it. North no, we're in 20th. Northeast corner? That would be next to the old Bader and Stephan store. And it took the oh, city yeah. forever to get those vehicles off that property. So I, I think you're right. They've shown no willingness to comply with anything that the city has. And I would has, add, I would add that this is, this is not just about their property. The Omni folks have done a beautiful job putting together something very nice. We just approved an upgrade to their sign. They're, they're, they, they are nice to look at when you're coming south yes. on right. 41. It's like it starts affecting other potential property owners. Mm -hmm. I think the city's been way beyond patient here. To the, to the city, what would the impact in the legal process be if we were to approve this? I'm going to defer to our <laughs> council that's sitting in the back room. And <laughs> You'd have to be here. I'm sorry. I'm getting a feel of it because of it. Because then, no one no, knows. Because then, come on up, Andy. Yeah. 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 yeah part, part of it yeah, yeah, is important here, but part of what we're doing no, is we're also putting together a site, uh, an, uh, another approved development plan that now will have a resolution out there again that more clearly spells out some of the issues that we've had out there if we if we don't approve it we'll we'll go back and we'll do our best to, to uh, continue to enforce the 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 existing codes and the, the plan development that's approved out there and we'll continue to do that I think with this action we were hoping to get some more black and white Amy do you want, yeah. you want to save me on this place <laughs> <laughs> say that I, a little I, louder so with I, this action we were hoping what she's I think with this action we were hoping to kind of get a fresh slate right and I I appreciate the concerns that everyone has that it might not be followed um, but at that point we could take subsequent action so the the best case scenario is that it is complied with and everyone walks away happy um, worst case what we're doing is just setting a fresh slate for everyone saying okay these are all the rules that we have to follow from here on out. So again, it's kind of that fresh start. Everyone's stepping back and, and looking at these conditions as the, the baseline, if you will. I don't know if that addresses what you were kind of that, going for, Darren. That, that, yes, it does. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that answers my question. And that being said, that I, I would be supportive of this given that they've been out of compliance for a decade and they're still there. They're still doing the same thing. So if this opens up a possible door to finally settling the situation, I'd be supportive of that. Bob and Kevin. Are we going to set a time limit on this? Not a year, not a two-year, 
you know. You can't do anything. Any you can't do anything until we start getting compliance with these conditions. Could, All right. Are you asking if we could set a a time frame of you must be fully in compliance by oh. six months? Six months. This is what I'm asking. Are we going to let it run out another ten years? <laughs> Or are we going to set some kind of a time limit that they have to be in compliance before this is going to take place? Amy, do you have a opinion? <laughs> that would, I guess I would ask Darren as well, but <laughs> on this one, I mean, once it's approved, though, that's the, the plan development for the property. That, that's a good point, because a plan development can always be revoked. So if we don't show, if it doesn't show good faith, we can move forward with the revocation. Conditional use permits can be revoked. Plan developments can, can be revoked through through the same process. But if you don't see through. anything moving forward, how long are you gonna wait? That's what I'm, that's my yeah. question. We haven't been waiting. So, I mean, we've been- We've been we've, waiting for how many years well, already? But uh, we should. We've so we've been, I think there's we've been out two there questions bit. you're asking. There's the, are we going to revoke the plan development or are we going to move forward with legal action to enforce the current plan development. Um, I guess I would say maybe look at it less from a revocation standpoint and more on here's what we as a plan commission want to implement. So once it's in place, we're actually going to be active and make sure we're implementing that and enforcing it if we need to. I don't know if that addresses your question, but again, I look at it less of revocating what we're doing today than in making sure we enforce what we're doing today. We're, we're, we're setting it up, we're getting approved, we're proposing to, to approve a plan that we can more easily enforce, uh, enforce right. when we run into an issue, and that happens right away. I mean, yeah. we're not, the reason we're here is we've been out there and we've been citing. So you know we've seen we've seen things evolve at that site as well that it, it gets our attention and this from our standpoint this sets us up we think in a better position to continue to enforce down the road do we need a time frame no we don't need a, I don't I don't believe we need a time frame because <coughs> everything should be immediate when you say they've been cited mm -hmm. is that costing them money not yet they're getting actual citations that they have to pay a fine on because they're not in compliance. Everything has to go through the court system. That's, so, I mean, we, we put them out, we, the reason why we're here is they're under citation for a bunch of cars that are out there that shouldn't be out there. So they're trying to it, go through the administrative process to, re, to remedy that. So who writes, I mean, I get my we question write is who writes the citations? Gentleman over there uh, to your left. So basically left. it's just a, a warning tool. No, we, we're in court. We are we are literally in court, but this is part of but this is this is the part of the process that a lot of people don't understand why a lot of times zoning compliance takes a while because we have to go through we have to go well, through this process. That. That oh, I know, but people need to understand that when somebody calls in for a complaint and and you don't see immediate compliance, it's because we have this due process. We're currently going through this due process. Um, yeah. I'll a little bit of what kind of was alluded to here when we talk about kind of the fresh slate. We don't get mean a fresh slate in terms of him getting to start over. So much has gone on with this property through the years. The legal trail of paperwork of what's been approved and changed and has gotten a little murky and hard to follow. Some of the thought process we had here is that's why we brought forward a bunch of old conditions. Trying to clean this up into a single document, single resolution that says here's everything you have to follow. And if he doesn't, it will aid the city in legal enforcement in the future. Because we have a one single document instead of saying, well, here are your conditions, you're most six the first time, here are your second away conditions, here are your, it would give us a little bit easier of a path to legal enforcement. Is that adequately said? That's perfect. Kathy, I do. Okay. <laughs> Some of us said, no way, Jose, a few minutes ago. So what you've just said, is this is going to aid we swallow hard and hope we don't choke uh -huh. and we pass it but it will help the city in a lawsuit process in a way to resolve positively maybe mm -hmm. that's what's our happening out there that's okay well on that note i will try not to choke to and i will approve it 
There doesn't have to be any kind of time limit on when they meet those conditions? No, it's, so it has to be. Enforcing right away. That's the, we're enforcing now. We, he needs to come in with all these plans now. Um, We've requested, and I guess that is something we maybe aim to consider. As part of this, we've put, what, three or four recommendations in saying this should be brought back to Planning Commission, this should be brought back to Planning Commission. Is it is it worth considering saying those things must be brought back in a six months a year, a reasonable time frame? Because sure, yeah, I guess huh? the option is if this is approved and it doesn't bring them back, we could just straight move forward with enforcement. You were conditioned, you know, three months from now, we could say you were conditioned to bring these things forward. You haven't. We move forward with legal action. So I guess it's kind of a... Yeah, so we don't have to put time frame on. We don't really don't need a time frame because no, so. we could just move forward with legal action if, if it has not been followed. Okay. So that, and we, it's a good point. We've got a lot. We how have many, a lot of non compliance How many right votes now? are needed for approval since there's eight? Is that five? You need five because right, a tie is, <clears throat> a tie is a, is a loss, I believe. It's tie would be a loss. It's a majority of who's, who's here. So. We have John, eight, eight here. So you would need I, I just want to say that if, if we do pass this, this will yeah. be the first time we pass a specific implementation plan without a specific Four. plan. Four. There's no plan that right. we have to we have to Four. wait on it <laughs> because they haven't turned Four. one in because it was all out so of whack with plan. the dimensions and yeah. everything. <laughs> so and I guess my I'm not immune to reason and I'm not immune to compromise by any means. So and and when when. Kathy, uh, when Kathy changes her mind, I can change my mind. So, um, but that said, um, one piece like that I that I don't quite get here is if if the the goal is to uh, try to give ourselves a more easily enforceable plan, uh, a, a you know a more clear roadmap towards compliance. I'm I'm sort of confused why we are. Allowing him or, or, or allowing him to request sort of expansion of uses, allowing him to uh, additional uses that that we aren't already allowing. It, it seems like we're not we're not being bargained with in good yeah. faith. Right. We are we yeah, are true. we are bargaining with a bad actor, yep. and we are doing so in a way that is allowing him to expand uses that he's not currently permitted to engage in on the site and doing so in the name of compliance, which he has already shown he is unwilling to meet. So uh, part of me, like, like I get it, I, I do understand it. If, if this is, you know, uh, if, if this is for the, you know, the long-term success of this particular project, that's fine and I can be swayed to that line of thinking. But it, it does really kind of gall me a little bit that at the same time we're looking at saying, well, you didn't follow the rules in 2006, you didn't follow the rules in 2008, you didn't follow the rules in 2010, you're still not following the rules, we're going to try to get you to follow the rules, but also why don't you go do these things that are outside of the rules as well. And I would that say really perfectly within this body's purview to say, nope. Outdoor storage is going to be as shown in the 2008 plan, and that's it. We're not granting you There's the increase in I, I would absolutely that's, I mean, be in this favor body could of, make of, of, any type of making of change you some want sort of motion here that before we consider any expansion of any use or any additional use, that this property be brought into compliance. Once it's brought into compliance, I'm willing to consider those other uses, but I don't think we should be considering an expansion of or an addition to non-permitted uses um, if he can't show a base level of compliance. So I will say this, automobile sales is a permitted use within the zoning district. Right. The reason he has to add that to his plan development is on the previous plan development it was not a listed use. Sure. So there is that aspect. If this was anywhere, a, a, any a, you know, you, UI site out there anywhere, and you mm -hmm. want to do auto sales, you can. It's a permitted use. Yeah. In this case, they need it because of the plan development. 
So that's one aspect that is, but I do fully understand your, yeah. you know, and, and that's one this body can look at. Maybe you say no to the outdoor store additional storage. Maybe yeah. you say no to the auto sales. That's, that's, I think that's where, maybe that's where I'm I really. I'd like to do that. Yeah. I just can't get my arms around. You're right. The, the beauty of the plan development process, having been on it from both sides as a reviewer and as a participant, you know, in, in, this, in this process, the beauty of it is that the two sides work towards sort of the best site possible knowing the limitations of the code. And, and that takes good faith on both sides. It takes a trust by the, by the city that the petitioner is going to actually, actually execute what they say they're going to, and it takes a trust on the petitioner that the city is going to allow them you know, to, to do what they need to do. That hasn't occurred here. So I'm, I'm really, really wary of allowing more bad faith bargaining uh, by somebody who has shown that they're not willing to live up to their end of that bargain. So, all that yammering aside, um, I guess that how would we go about yeah. essentially making a baseline compliance motion mm -hmm. saying that they need to, I mean, we'll, we'll approve a specific implementation plan, which is Thank you for making that point, but that's yes. really silly, that we are in, we're we approving a specific implementation plan yeah. without a plan <laughs> and without anything specific and with no implementation previously done. So, I'm yes. going to be yeah. on that. But, um, yeah, this is a mess. Yeah, this is a mess. This has been a mess for a decade. So, I, 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 like I said, I hats off to you guys for doing this, but like we've been frustrated with this now for ages. So, Not um, that you haven't. Yeah, not that you haven't either. <laughs> yeah, we just get to you know, say it publicly. Um, so I guess how would we go about making that motion then, Mark? What what of these conditions how can we talk? simply make a motion that would that, so that, that would, would it would I think it would baseline compliance with what has been previously approved. And that's tough. Or do we need to punt this? I don't do we need to bring it back two weeks from now once you have a chance to review it. It's up to you. I mean as Amy just kinda said then you're probably denying it is your best bet because baseline is what was previously approved that he's not complying with. Um, if you're thinking yeah, somewhere but I don't, between I don't there make and it now, more hard for you guys to administer this or, or execute we this. We could put conditions on. Unfortunately, the answer is probably more conditions. You know, conditioning it to uh, limiting the outdoor yikes. storage area to. There is no outdoor the storage. One, the, the one acre, the one acre previously, you know, yeah. approved. You do could we, add that condition. Do saying, we lay it over so they can get I mean, this figured out? Yeah. <laughs> do we do we lay this so over so you nice have two meal. weeks to figure no. out what the whim of the plan commission is here? Uh, I mean, I mean, what we were just talking about. If you know what we could do is deny the expansion of the storage area and uh, and grant the auto sales we with the, with the conditions and the, and the council figures it out. Right? Yeah. That's not, right? not ours. Yeah, Steve's <laughs> gone. Steve's gone. gone. He can't defend himself now. <laughs> oh, well, no, I, uh, people. Yeah. yeah. But I mean that that I mean we we could lay it over, but I don't. Yeah, is something going to change in the two weeks that we're going to No, come I, I'm back more here? thinking like, would it give you guys more time to to craft a recommendation that's maybe more in line with what us? The consensus <laughs> so is from my perspective. For a vote from a staff perspective. The auto sales does not concern me as much as the outdoor storage. So okay. granting him the additional use of the auto sales, as long as it is done in a... Wait a minute. We might need to tighten up what constitutes a, a vehicle for sale, the condition it's in. Uh -huh. See, the this overtime. Is, this well, <laughs> there's no perfect motion. Which are inoperable. I mean, we already have an inoperable there's unlicensed. But are they licensed? We, we haven't investigated what's a for sale license at a lot. What, you know, what do, you, do you have to have a sticker on? Yeah, I mean, I know, I know like in previous, in previous auto lot Wait, approvals, right. we've made that requirement that it has to be state licensed for auto sales. Making for three has to be state licensed. And we put that on other projects that we've approved. So. Still and they're upset because we're treating like every done. other property. Right. I, think, I think our. I, well, I think part of our concern speed. is, are you just parking vehicles there to say they're for sale? You're not really offering yeah. them up for sale, and it's just a bridge between whoever location they're ultimately ending up at. Yeah. So, if, is there a way to tighten that up 
and maybe there is a way to tighten that up. Is there, if you lay this all over two years, two years. Two years. <laughs> two years. We are two dealing with time. So logical time here as well. So so I'm retiring about nine years, so nine years from your <laughs> December 4th. 4th. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. we could bring it back to December 4th, and maybe we'll, tight, we'll we'll think through some of the issues that we that we discussed and see if we can tighten up some conditions and do that. And so it, we'll do that. If you're if you're unclear right now, and I know you don't like Make the layover. <laughs> Make the motion. You have the floor. <laughs> but it would give us it would give us some more time to maybe some of these concerns about the state of the cars that are out there. To maybe think through that a little bit more. The uh, use expansion. What was that? The use expansion. The use expansion. I we, we fully hear we you know I guess we hadn't thought about just denying the use expansion yeah. because you know th this is your use expansion. This is your use expansion. Basically, what he wants to do is put a fence around. The expansion. Oh, and around the edges. Yeah. I mean, nice, nice. Around the edges. Yeah. <laughs> From our perspective, you know, we're, we're probably putting a band aid on it and that yeah. will be enclosed. We won't see it anymore, so we'll feel better. Okay. Um, <laughs> maybe, that's, maybe that's not the right thing to do. I mean, from a plan perspective. You need prison walls. Plan condition not perspective, see it anymore. you could deny that. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. So, I think nowhere, nowhere in the 14 conditions, I believe, because it's trying to go through there, was there any mention of immediate removal of um, property encroaching upon? Um, Home uh, on other property owners is that that was because it said anything it's stored has to be in this yeah, de de we're, we're delineated saying, storage area. We're, we're not saying it directly in those terms, we're saying only storage within the approved area is permitted, which means everything else has to go right. But the, the, number three, so the issue that I have with that particular statement though is that because of how long it takes to do anything, uh, it, we, we, we leave it up to the a budding property owner to take civil action is there anything that we can do to put a timeline on how quickly number three has to be satisfied if we continue on this because you know we heard from the budding po property over that there's been some movement well yeah there's movement but what does that mean two years from now the final movement would occur that's if we have any ability to help move that along I'm very interested yeah. in that no expansion. I mean, we, we haven't approved the sales use. And no expansion of this. No expansion until. This feels like a bad relationship to me. <laughs> Where you're trying to bargain. And, yeah, and, and I, you I, know I, it's lost, but you're starting to try to sell for what you're something. Because he can't move any of those nice trailers of in because then he's got no driveway. <laughs> and usually, it's something that courts do. Give the time frame is, is usually how we for enforcement and working in that fashion. Because if we say they got to be gone in six months, they're not gone in six months. We start the enforcement. Yeah. If we, put, if we don't put them, we could go tomorrow. And Amy is approved and say, courts make a move. Amy and I were just talking. And she and she had said that yeah, it might get, it might move things if we put put a time frame on it. Then it might move things in the, in the other direction. Whereas if we approve the plan development and they're in violation of that plan development, we can write them up for, for a citation right away and get it into the get it into the system. Generally, we'll give you we, we do like 30 days. We'll give you like 30 days to comply. That's generally what we do. Two weeks to 30 days, somewhere in there, depending on the type of violation. Um, so I don't think we need a time frame per se because um, we can enforce right away, and we've been. You know, talk with the, the. We're already going out there this week to investigate the, the trailer encroachment. If we can, if we can invest, if we can find a way to to write that up for an encroachment, we are going to do that. So uh, you were the guy that had a. So what's the is staff in favor of a two week layover? Is that is that what I was getting out of what was going on? I think uh, it would help us kind of uh, re. Uh, we can talk amongst ourselves to figure out some of the concerns that we've heard. We can maybe come back with uh, some of the answers and some of the questions that we're talking about right now. Um, at the next meeting, we'll be a little bit more prepared. Maybe, that the, maybe the applicant will show up. I don't know. <laughs> right. then, and, that, and that doesn't 
hinder or impact our position within the timing of, of our we have a status process. conference we have a we have a status conference we're, we're we're getting we're trying to get through the process so i mean we're it, it will not impact it okay. my status conference with the court is after your next meeting okay good and then i would like comes. to make that motion that we lay it over until next meeting Council will be December 11th. It's been moved and seconded that we lay this over to the next Should meeting, which will be December 4th. Oh, which is in time for you guys. Oh, pardon me. Oh, there's one question here. We have. I just want to verify that if we lay it over in this, because it's also going to council after this body, how that lines up with her. I suppose that. We've been talking for longer than that. You're good. <laughs> There's some things came up that I think we, no, I, we need to spend some time thinking through. We may have still in our, still in our but, but then it takes two weeks longer to get to the council to see how that works with their yeah. 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 So the scheduling for the status conference on this case is December 12th. So it'd be the day after That's not good. But no, it's day after council. Day after council. council. Day after council. So that, that would should work. be. So that's that's going to be tight, but you can do it. Lucky us. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded that we lay this over to the next meeting and they can do their wizardry. Mm -hmm. And all the okay. things line up. John moved and Ed seconded, I believe. Yeah. yeah. John H. And that John. Bearded John. <laughs> Any other discussion on this, or do you want to keep going for another hour or two? Call the question. Yeah. How's right. that? <laughs> let's, call, let's call it. All right. Hint? Aye. Keeper? Aye. Bikert? Aye. Perry? No. Prop? Aye. Cohen? Aye. Cummings? No, sorry. Ford? Aye. Poitas? Aye. Motion to lay over seven years. Sorry, seven one. All right, any other business, gentlemen? No, thank you. Have Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Move to second. All the Aye. 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 You too. 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 You